Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Hello, hello. You guys are going to love today because we're talking about gifts and gift giving for people with dementia. And it's a perfect day to discuss that because today is my daughter's birthday. So I would wish her a happy birthday, but she's not a listener. So what I will do is thank Elizabeth Miller from the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast for coming on and sharing her gift guide and her knowledge. So thanks for joining us today, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. I know we haven't we we haven't done one together. I was on your show a while ago, but yes, you haven't been on vice mine. versa. Yes. I love fading memories and I love that it's part of the whole care network. Definitely. So we're all part of the same family. So you've been podcasting for six years as well, right? Yep. I'm in my sixth season. Um I <laughs> launched in November's National Family Caregivers Month. So happy National Family Caregivers Month, everybody. And that was a, a launch. I try to do some kind of special every year, but I think I don't really have a launch this year. Just keep on keeping on. I've been really focusing yeah. on, on the speaking part of my business and really trying to get out there as far as reaching um, different companies and organizations to scale the caregiving support. Yes, it's definitely something we need. So where should we start? Do you want to start with gifts for caregivers or gifts for people living with dementia? Let's, I, I mean, I'm always one to put the caregivers first. So like, <laughs> sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think, um, when it comes to buying gifts for caregivers, uh, it, anything is probably going to be appreciated, right? We're just so grateful that somebody has been thinking about us and has us top of mind. But, you know, there's a there's a lot of different things you could do, I think, for a family caregiver. And of course, I also like self-care focused ones because like not only are you giving them a gift, but you're giving them a tool of something that can help them mitigate burnout. So anything from like, you know, stuff that they would use like every day. Um, you know, we just had this uh, in the fall, we have a sister's weekend and we do this favorite things party. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. um, where you, we brought, we decided we were going to each bring three things. We were going to be $25 or less. This might be a great idea for someone to do as a swap exchange for their book club or their caregiver support group or, or whatnot. But I brought three of the same things. We kind of presented them. They're not wrapped. Um, but I got a lot of good ideas there this year for things like we had um, we had the things to clean our glasses, which would be a good thing for they're called peeps. They're good for caregivers and for care recipients, anybody who's wearing sunglasses even because um, they get grody. Right. Very practical constantly. gift <laughs> constantly. Um, and then we had things like I'm wearing it now. Actually, I love this Maybelline lifter gloss. It's affordable. It tastes good. Not that you're eating it, but you're going to get some in your mouth on something. Smells good. It stays on um, decent. So uh, I had brought that as part of mine. And then there was some cool body scrubs and um, lotions from, I think it was called La La Licious. Um, so I think anything that can help us, you know, oh, a boomstick was another one. It was like, stuff that a, this would be a very handy little makeup tool for a caregiver because you can put some quick color on your face. You can use it on your lips. Like it's one of those try it anywhere type of things. Um, oh, that's something you could like throw in your purse or your bag. And when you, when you yeah. look in the mirror and go, Oh, ick, I look, yeah, I look so pale. <laughs> emergency, emergency. Yeah. Put it, throw it in your self care tote. Um, so I think, you know, little things like that, you know, everybody's got different budgets these days. Uh, as far as, as far as stuff that you can use. Um, we had did this, we, I do a happy, healthy caregiver virtual cafe is kind of every other month. I do different kind of support where I want to do some kind of a unique event for caregivers and introduce them to something. We had a Zentangle, um, consultant come and teach us how to Zentangle. And it's basically like you're creating patterns. It's an abstract art, but it's very meditative, and she had given away as part of a prize, this Sakura Zentangle artist tool set. It's like $20. But the thing with Zentangle is you use these little paper and you use like a micro tip 
pan. Um, and so it's the little kit for that. And I like it because it's portable. You could throw it again in a self-care tote bag and pull it out just to kind of like, I need a mindful moment quick. Um, you know, cause I'm a journaler. I love my journal, of course, but the, I've got that here too, the just for you daily self-care journal. It's a prompted journal. Um, and this is one form, right. Of meditation and, and doing that, but the Zen tangling and art journaling is another type of where it just gives you calm and peace. I can tell you, I felt very differently at the beginning of that session than I did at the end of the session. So something, something creative there. But I think too, when you're given a gift to anybody, whether it's a caregiver or care recipient, like just thinking about that person and what they naturally like, um, and what they care about or what they maybe have mentioned to you in conversation, uh, could be, could be something that would, uh, what would spark something. I was thinking, unless you know for sure they have a green thumb, don't give people a plant. They don't need something else to take care of. Yeah, I think as caregivers, right, we we crave less things to, to take care of. The only exception I have to that would be that I did get an arrow garden one year. It's like for herbs. Um, hmm. Right now I have basil. My basil is like taken off. Um, and even if I can't use it in what I'm cooking, because I'm not like this huge culinary chef, I uh, learned this tip from another caregiver, Lisa Negro, where she said um, she rubs it in her hands and smells the basil on her hands. I've been using it to freshen up my garbage disposal. Like I literally take some leaves off of it and put it in there to make it smell better. So that's a really good idea. And I have a good idea. So I have the same issue. I have two pots with basil in it. I mentioned the other day we needed to do a pasta dish with ba- or with pesto. My husband's like, "Why?" And he's like, "Oh, never mind. I know why. Because <laughs> the plants are like big. <laughs> it's, and, it's pesto time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, and that's not something we normally eat a lot of anyway. Because you know, a lot of olive oil. It's not the healthiest sauce, but it is tasty. But I have been making basil mayonnaise, and you basically just grind up. I think it's like half a cup of mayo and a third a cup of basil. I just do it to taste because when I did it per the instructions, it needed a little more basil and I had a little more basil. So I threw it in there. And I am telling you, that is, (laughs) that makes lunch delightful. Oh yeah. It's just like a little extra special and all you need is, you know, food processor or, you know, maybe a, a blender. I don't have a blender. So I just use the food processor, grind it up and Sounds you know, yummy. I, it is really good. And it's, you know, I throw just a touch of lemon juice in it just to kind of give it, you know, a little extra, um, what do they call that? Brightness, which is a very strange culinary term. But yeah, it's delicious. And it's, you know, you just plop in however much mayonnaise you need and then keep adding basil until it tastes the way you want to taste. Super easy. Mm, never thought to use that. I think like th- little things like that, where you take something that people are doing all the time and you can maybe elevate it a little bit. So think about like if someone's a tea drinker, you know, how could you make that special? <laughs> like, you know, sp- tea splurging on teas that they might not buy for themselves or the presentation of it and package it into all together, maybe with some biscotti or something like that. Like it just like treat them, treat them to something um, spectacular. I also think anything pampering like, um, massage gun or a silk pillowcase, um, or a, uh, obviously a nail appointment for their, you know, find out from their person where they, they go for those types of things and a gift certificate to that. Um, I'm a big reader. So like reading is really fun for me, but sometimes, you know, there's lights now that you can get, I don't want to hold a flashlight at night. I don't necessarily like reading a Kindle book all the time. Um, so, but there's lights that you could light up and I can think of caregivers using that. Cause sometimes we're doing those things in very precocious types of places. Um, what else would be good? Yeah. I mean, any kind of activity that you can um, help encourage. I'm into pickleball recently. Have you tried to explore pickleball, Jennifer? No, there is a big pickleball teams in our community. I have very wacky vision, so I don't have depth perception. I have blazy eye. and It wasn't corrected Mm. until I was four. So I could very, very much understand my mom's visual processing problems because I have similar ones myself. Um, I don't realize, I know I don't have depth perception, but it's been this way my entire life. So, you know, it's not that, it's not abnormal for me, but I don't like balls getting hurled at me because 
I'm ducking and you know, like I'm not trying to hit it back. You know, I could probably play with the hubby, but you know, I you'd have to hit the ball gently towards me or else it's not going to be very fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a lot. I love it because it's an accessible sport. It's definitely geared. It's for all ages, frankly. Um, but it's it, something like that could be fun. Like, Hey, let's, I think experiences are amazing. Let's take a pickleball lesson together. Let me take you on a hike. You know, I, I, I got you this fun little hat and I looked up a hiking trail, something where you can really be someone's self-care cheerleader and, um, have some kind of an experience together, a cooking class, a lesson of some sort where it's kind of a twofer, right? They're learning something and they're getting away from the caregiving world for a moment. If And if you're looking for cooking classes, um, I did one through King Arthur Baking. Um, it was called mm. Pizza Perfected and it was on Zoom because they're in friggin' Vermont. <laughs> so that's I'm, cool. I'm not getting there anytime soon. Totally want to go. I use tons of their recipes. But yeah, it's like, I don't know how we got into um, just really, we really like to make our own pizza at home. We haven't done it for a while because life. But it's it's not that hard, especially when somebody walks you through it and they sent you the video after, you know, like the next day. So you got to do it live. And I think it was like 40 bucks. It wasn't expensive. And it was at least two hours. That's and, cool. And I have the video. It's saved in my Dropbox files. And I can access it if, you know, because there's some techniques that you don't necessarily know. You know, and I mean, just learning that technique was worth the 40 bucks. But it was a nice experience. So if you can't get out or, you know, I don't... I live in the Sierra foothills, so I don't live near things, even though I'm only an hour <laughs> north of the state capital. It's like there's some pros and cons to smaller, air, quieter areas, <laughs> depending on the day. Sometimes the cons outweigh the pros. <laughs> but yeah, there's and I'm sure there's other places that do online cooking. And I bet there are. And even, you know, maybe your person, your caregiver is not a person who enjoys cooking at all. And then, yeah. you know, I I know for me, I used to dread the question as a sandwich generation working caregiver, like what's for dinner? And I'm like, oh, why do these people have to eat all the time? Yeah. Um, so something like that could be, you know, a, a, a subscription to like um, the green chef um, or some kind of prepared meals uh, or even like a uber eats or doordash gift card for those what are we going to eat emergencies i think all of that i mean just putting yourself in the mind of a of all the things if you're a caregiver listening like what what you wish you had um and what would have been helpful for you uh, having someone mow the lawn like or i'm going to do your laundry this week like there's a lot of things too that even if you don't have a budget like just showing up for someone else and doing something, taking something off of their plate um, would be amazing. Yeah, you could offer to help put up decorations for the holidays. Yeah, you could help offer to help do some deep spring cleaning, which the only reason that's coming to mind today is my golden retriever goes to the dog park regularly and the mm. dog park has its own lake. So <laughs> my dog is always wet and... Unfortunately, despite washing her and getting the grimy lake water off of her, she still stinks. So the couch cushions stink and the blanket on the couch stinks. And now my house stinks. So she's at the groomer, de-stinkifying, and the house is getting de-stinkified because I can't stand it. And I would, I don't want anybody to come over and go, whew, dang, man, it smells like swampy dog in here. Yeah. That's <laughs> a lot yeah. of work. You know, taking dogs all this... are a lot of work. Take the dogs for a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah take, really. You know, I mean, all of the, it's like, you know, anything that you can do. What were some of the most memorable things that you remember people giving you or gifting you, Jennifer, when you were in the throes of caregiving? <laughs> well, I had kind of a, I, I guess it's not that unique. A lot of the friends that I had had already been there, done that. So they were way less supportive than you would think. I think because they were like, been there, done that, not going back which I understand. I don't fault them for it at all. Um, most people just kind of treated like the holidays the way they would have despite caregiving. So, cause my mom was in memory care, so I don't think they, they thought that I needed any extra. Um, but I know like buying gifts for my mom, like not buying gifts felt horrible 
like I didn't care, which is obviously not true. But my mom didn't recognize anything new as hers, so she would freaking give it away. Yeah. That was worse. So it's like, okay, I spent 50 bucks on this outfit that's easy for you to put on, and you needed some new clothes, and you didn't recognize them as yours, so you're still wearing the pants that are two sizes too big, and you gave away this. I'm like, oh. Yeah. It was, have- it was hard challenges for sure as their as their cognitive skills continue to decline. I finally got, you know, and I know a lot of people will find this controversial, but my mom had zero concept of day, place, time, season. It always surprised me when we would like drive from like her care residence, like back to my house. We'd have to drive through the um, foothills, not the foothills up here in the mountains, foothills down the bay area of of california (laughs) and she'd be she'd make comments about the hills and i remember when we first moved her to the memory care i was terrified because we'd had a ton of rain which you know it's not normal in california anymore Mm -hmm. and the hills were green 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 it was like march so they we had our winter rains and they were green 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 and the next time i drove her through there because it there the grasses it doesn't matter if it rains in May, April and May, and maybe a little bit into June, which is super, super rare. That grass, it could be raining. That grass goes brown. It is just, mm. it's got its lifespan and that's it. And the next time we drove through, it was brown. And I thought, oh gosh, she's going to know I lied to her about the reason she's in memory care. Because we told her it was for, she needed to be there temporarily while we worked on the house, which was half true. <laughs> the temporary part was questionable, but we didn't need to work on her house, but you know, she had zero clue of what the day or season was. So I stopped stressing about including her on Christmas Day, on Thanksgiving Day. I just made special times and special, you know, like the last Christmas we had together. I picked her up for memory care, drove her around to the front of the community. We went to the assisted living dining room. They had great food. We had a very nice lunch. I gave her one gift. She loved it. We got back in the car, drove back to the memory care. It was like literally an hour. And it was like, that's all I want is just these just happy times for her and me if I can manage that too. So I just I just finally took all the pressure of keeping the holidays the way they were for her because that was just it was a losing battle and it was super stressful. So. Yes. Yes. It, they, it, it evolves and it changes. And I think, you know, you, you figured it out and you gave yourself grace and met her where she was, you know, at the time, which, I mean, I think as most caregivers, we kind of, we resist at first. And then at some point we're like, okay, this is like banging our head against the wall. Let's, let's figure it out. And so you brought her joy and it looked differently and mm-hmm. that's okay. It's Okay. She had a good time. I mean, there was like a 20 foot Christmas tree and she still didn't realize it was Christmas. And this was literally like two or three. Like, I think it was like the 21st or I think it was the 21st, whatever day Christmas was in 2019. This was the Monday before. And, you know, she didn't care. She didn't care if I was there on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or, you know, whatever, because she didn't know. She, she didn't, didn't know, know it was Christmas with 20 foot Christmas tree right there in front of her face. <laughs> now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about NeuroReserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. 
you know, and, and to that point, like if they love the Christmas tree, like leave it up, like leave it up, you know, like I'm thinking about, you know, let's I'm switching gears to gifts for our care recipients, you know, and thinking about their senses and the sensory part, like if it visual, like the, if the sparkle and the bright and was appealing to mom or to your person, then um, it's okay. It's it kind of bring some joy to kind of leave that stuff all up all year long. I know, you know, depending on their phase of, of their cognitive decline, like certain gifts might, might make more sense than others, you know, in the beginning, um, when they need a little help with stuff, like maybe the, the large clock display would be good to, to see that. Um, I know one of my mom's favorite gifts and my, um, and then I've given to my aunt who had FTD and progressive supernuclear palsy was we had a, one of those picture frames where you can email photos. Um, and so particularly if it's like past photos that are bringing them comfort, like scan some past photos and, and put that in. And it's like, it's almost like for them watching TV. It's like, this is the TV of their, of their life. Um, it, Mom was bedridden, my mom, for the last two years. So we played a lot of, we did adult coloring. And again, it may not look good. That's okay. Um, we did a lot of games. And sometimes we reverted back to games from our childhood. Like we played Play-Doh together. We um, we did Connect Four because that was, you know, easy. And it was like complicated rules. And sometimes we played Uno and she would kind of make up her own rules and that was okay too. It was like, I just went along with it. Um, but spending time, time together around that. And, you know, music was another thing that was really, really important. I think it's one of the last things, right. From the memory that, um, goes is, is so creating a special playlist, I think for somebody, particularly if you're on a, on a low budget, that could be really cool. Um, you know, there's a lot of dementia products that I'm sure you've had featured on the fading memories podcast where dementia specific content for TV, um, and to kind of reduce all of that overwhelm for them, um, would be, would be good. And I think it's, you know, they deserve to be comfort and, and pampered too. So, um, some, some nice sheets or some good slippers or something more practical, I think, particularly if they're living in a, in a memory care, um, community, you don't need a lot of stuff, right? Like more, more stuff, um, more stuff to travel down the hall to other rooms. <laughs> yes. So, you know, one of my get one of the gifts that my mom really liked, I tried to, we did a lot of subscription boxes, particularly when I was a remote caregiver for her and my sister was primary caregiver and we had exchanged the reins there is I love the subscription boxes because she, we would open them together. So some of them were geared towards older adults. There's ones even um, connectivities is one that comes to mind of having an activity that you can do together um, with somebody. But for a while there, like my mom was, had a passion for France and Paris. So I found this person that did these artful letters from Paris. And it was just like, almost like talking to you about what they're seeing, what they're doing. And she would keep those, um, I remember one of the gifts in the, in the older adult box was a bird feeder and like a bird book, because again, she's bedridden. She could see, you know, things, things come up, um, to her. And then we switched subscription boxes and I had one that was more food oriented because again, like mom didn't need more stuff, but she was diabetic and now there's like something for everything. Right. So yep. there's, there's a healthy snack box and we would go through those and she would pull out the ones that she liked and the ones that she didn't like really were the ones, but then she would make a little basket of them. And when the professional caregivers came or the chaplain from church to give communion or, um, different visitors, my mom was always the hostess. Right. So this gave her something then to like easily offer somebody from, from, you know, without having all of the things that she would have had, um, in her life. So that was, that was a, a good one. I want to say it was love, love with food or something like that, but, um, that would have been a really good one for my mom because one of the quote unquote failures I had with her was, you know, they say, well, simplify the hobbies they love to do. So my mom painted when I was a kid, a, was it acrylics or oils, can't remember, you know, she, so she took painting classes I think she did both acrylics and oils. She did woodworking later in life. She was a beautiful mm. seamstress. What else did she do? She did crafty stuff. You know, like when the um, fabric painting was a big thing. I still have a sweatshirt. 
Halloween sweatshirt from when my daughter was a year. So today is her 32nd mm -hmm. birthday. The sweatshirt has gone from fitting to not fitting to now it's too big. So <laughs> I keep threatening to make a new one, but that was kind of the Maybe stuff Maybe just that put she it loved. on a... Hang it up and Halloween, you know, hang it up and in, oh, in the season. Oh, I wear it. I look yeah. kind of, it's very warm because it's quite big, but that's okay. You know, it's like, um, it's just. Yeah, it's special. It's fun. And I have a, a Christmas sweatshirt. My mom and my daughter made when she was about five. They used her hands to make a wreath. And I still have that one. And I have to be really careful because, you know, you can only wash those things so often. And they're getting a little old, so they're getting kind of vintage. <laughs> but she was terrified of doing some doing it wrong. Like she didn't do the adult coloring because she could never figure out inside or outside the lines. And that frustrated her. So that was a, a no. Um, I literally brought the simplest little craft things that, you know, a blind dog could do. And she just was, I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up. <sighs> so what she yeah. really wanted to do was sit around and shoot the breeze to, to keep this clean. And there's only so much of shooting the breeze you can do with somebody who repeats themselves constantly. And she was she was 74 when she moved into memory care, passed away just past her 77th birthday. So she was on the younger end. She was always trying to help the other residents, which was great. Gave her a purpose. Mm. No matter that she couldn't help them. But you know, at least in her mind, she offered and that was all she needed. But yeah, she would have loved being able to just share some snacks with people. I'm sorry I didn't think about that one, but see, well, I was, that's, I was, that's why we do this, Jennifer. Yeah. We, pay it, we pay it forward. <laughs> like, listen, we don't have all the, we were, we were figuring it out as we went. Right. And like, sometimes, sometimes we hit and sometimes, you know, I, you know, I have some guilt. My mom at one point wanted a, um, remember she had torn out of some magazine, one of those lifelike dolls. And mm. I basically like made fun of my mom for like wanting this doll. Mm. Like it was, um, I'm like, what do you want a baby doll for? Like, I don't understand this at all, but my mom raised six kids, you know, and she didn't, you know, she didn't even have the cognitive decline until, until toward the end of her life. So it wasn't like dementia related. Um, and we didn't get her the doll, but then later I was at a conference and the company was there and they were raffling off the doll. And my sister and I were, were there together. And I said, mom really wanted one of these dolls then. I'm sure she would be delighted to get it now. But like the joy for all pets and the dolls, like that companionship, like now I know, of course, as a, as a coach for caregivers and a certified senior advisor, like how important like social interaction is for people. Um, and the touch, you know, just the, um, like even like a hand massage or a foot massage or, you know, smiling my, I had a cousin, Jill, that used to go to my mom and like, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get in there, Aunt Carol. I got my dry brush and I've got my massage and I'm going to put in some essential oils and we're having a spa day today. Um, so anyway, we can't beat ourselves up for that stuff. I always wondered if my mom would have appreciated a baby doll. So she, she only raised two of us and she had three grandkids. My daughter is 14 years older than my niece who is grandchild number two, not number two in special, but just number two in the lineage <laughs> of things. And so she, my niece and nephew did not get the good years with my mom. My daughter got all of them, which, you know, I'm very grateful for. And so is my daughter. But I always wondered, um, there weren't a lot of ladies in the memory care that car carried around baby dolls. And the first 18 months that she lived there, she had her dog, which was a whole other headache. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very, very funny because they were, they renovated the entire community. They started over in the assisted living and they kind of finished up in the memory care. And I knew what was coming. And my sister and I had been talking about, do we need, you know, the dog was becoming more of an appendage than a companion to mom. And like I said, she was a trouble. Um, we had a black miniature poodle who they normally weigh about 12 to 15 pounds. Misty mm -hmm. weighed 28. So oh, she wow. was double her size, which meant she could not. But she probably proper... could remember how much she was feeding her. Oh, no. Every time the dog looked at her, she would feed her. It was awful. And then the residents, the other, and this is where the trouble started. <laughs> and, you know, it's like good trouble, but not good trouble, is um, the residents all felt really bad for this poor dog is so hungry. I'm like, no, the dog is about to pop. Okay. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to find an exploded poodle all over the floor. And I hope nobody's listening during lunch. 
<laughs> they so they would literally, you know, they had very um portion controlled meals. You know, mm-hmm. if they needed more, they'd get more. It's not like they starved them or anything, but you know, some of us eat more than we should. So <laughs> It was nice having lunch with mom because it was very portion controlled, but they would literally like wrap up meat in the cloth napkins and like sneak it to this dog. And, you know, we tried everything, but, you know, the executive director was great. I had a really great relationship with him and he beat around the bush so hard. He was not going to ask me to rehome the dog, but that is what he wanted. And that is what we ended up doing, which I'm sure was beneficial to the dog. My mom didn't even notice she was gone. We stressed about like what would happen. Oh, you know, interesting. Would, oh God, it was so frustrating. <laughs> you, know, you stress about things and you think, you know, oh, if the dog disappears, she's going to be anxious and, you know, upset and blah. No, pff, the dog, the dog went to grooming and never came back. Mm. So I, I wonder if, if I've always wondered about the baby doll thing. It's kind of. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I think now you know, back in 2014, 2015, when I was starting my caregiving, there wasn't all of the social um, content that there is. And we see a lot of examples of what's working well for other dementia caregivers um, and how they're interacting and how people are entertaining themselves. And it's, um, it's just nice. It's nice to know that you're not alone out there. It's nice to see what other people are doing to, um, to keep this person, you know, to keep your both, both of yourselves kind of in a joyful spot and, um, and not kind of lose your life at the same time. Like I got, you know, one of the tips I got, um, I've been doing these real self-care tips on my Instagram and from one of the dementia caregivers, she said, I like fresh flowers, but my mom who has dementia was like pulling them apart, eating them, oh, no. whatever. <laughs> and so she's like, we've solved this by like when mom, mom goes to a day program, I bring my fresh flowers out. When she comes home, I have these fake silk ones that I put in the place and like, we're both happy, you know? So I think, you know, the best ideas come from other family caregivers who are, who are living this and, um, and giving, giving, giving great gifts and just showing up for people. I think that showing up is the most important because most of us don't need more stuff. No. Like every, every time they build another one of those self storage places, I'm like, First it's off, funny. it's exp- they just they have one across the street from each other where I live. Like I'm like, oh, maybe we'll get like I really want a bagel shop. Like I want like real yummy bagels, like a Kentucky or so. Like, oh no, we got a storage shop again. Or a car yeah, wash. But- like, what's oh. up with that? Okay, so where I live, there is one full service car wash and it's okay. But we have those quick quacks where they do the outside and you could do the inside. That's what all these are that I'm talking about. Yes. Okay. Where I used to live, they had like three in a town of 70,000 people, maybe three or four, like full service car washes where you drove through and it scrubbed the outside. And then the nice people cleaned down the inside. They got all the dog hair out. I don't have that up here. And I don't like cleaning the inside of my car. <laughs> I know. Actually, that'd be a great gift idea, right? Like most of us have cars. Hey, I'm going to take your car for a couple hours and I'm just going to like have it detailed and make it smell good and sparkle and shine. Like what caregivers got time to do that? Yeah. Nobody. especially Like I said, up here, there's literally one place and it's not that close to home and it's not in my, I don't drive very far. I don't, I go to the nail appointment and I don't, I don't get out of the house very much. <laughs> so we're going to fix that next year, but <laughs> You know, I've been working from home since 2005, so that predates the podcast. Those were back when I was a photographer, and the clients came to me in my home. I had a home studio attached to my house. It was awesome. But technology That would be a great gift, too, Jennifer. I'm sure you did a lot of photo family photography sessions or, you know, I think sometimes when we're in a caregiving world, we just are not taking pictures of us during that season. and. I don't know about you, but I wish I had more pictures like of, of us together, like mom and I together. Like I just saw another caregiver. They just went, they had a photo shoot. Um, and she was sharing some of that on her channel. And I thought, how beautiful is that? You know, just to have these, particularly if you know, you're going to, maybe you're going to write a book, maybe you're going to have a podcast, maybe you're going to want to share your story in front of, in front of people. And to have that kind of those visuals to help show showcase that story i think is powerful and i wish i had more more of the two of us but she wasn't super cooperative but i did and i'm so grateful i did this so my mom 
the hair gal, the salon gal from the assisted living would go to memory care and pick up the women who had appointments and take them and, you know, cut and whatever, whatever the appointment was for, like cut my mom's hair. And that worked great for two years. And then my mom decided she was not going with this woman. And I thought, I am not spending my visitation day with you sitting in a dimly lit salon room. And you don't know I'm here because your back's to me. And then, you know, then you're tired and taking you out. So I'm like, this is not what I want to do. So I finally said, if you don't want to go to the salon gal, you're not going to the salon gal. So it was um, like late November. And she's literally like constantly brushing her bangs out of her face. And I'm like, okay, that's a sign. We got to make this happen. And I thought, if I have to sit in there while the gal cuts and dries your hair. So we're talking a good 45 minutes. Um, I'm bringing my portrait gear. So I brought my ca- camera. I brought my studio light. I got there, cringed a little bit because the shirt mom was wearing was not what I would have picked for a portrait. And I'm like, I got one of two battles to pick here. So as we were walking over to the salon, the trees, and I know people are going to not believe me, but we do get fall colored trees in California. <laughs> it's not like, you know, Ver- Vermont and those places. You got to look for it a little bit, but it's there. And the fall colored trees worked great with her shirt. So I just left the light in the car and took literally five shots of her natural light outside. Most beautiful pictures I've had of my mom. That was December 9th. She had her next hair appointment on March 9th. March 8th is the day she fell and broke her leg, and she died March 31st. Oh, so that was wow. the last opportunity I had. I'm so glad that I drug that crap with me because the camera's not light, and the, all that stuff is, it's, you know, you're like a pack mule. It's a pain in the butt, and it was, you know, hmm. it was worth it. And so I'm so glad you have those, yes. And my, my dad was very good about bringing mom, like, so I, like, I literally had a studio attached to the house, and he would come every December with mom and dad and the dog and they would do their Christmas portrait. And I have a beautiful one of the three of them because the dog looks like she's smiling. And of course it's a black dog, which is very difficult to photograph. And my parents who are pale white people or were, and I got my mom to laugh. My mom was always terrible with pictures. She always smirked. If anybody's old enough to remember that smirky, like emoji, even though that's not what we called them back in the 70s. But that was my mom. My mom was the ultimate smirk smiler. And I got her to laugh. And when you look at that photo, you would not know there was anything wrong. You think my both my parents were in great health. So I'm really yeah. grateful to have that too. So you're right. That is, you know, it, you need to hire a photographer that's got a lot of experience. And you need to talk to them and ask them if they've ever dealt with somebody with dementia or autism, which I've done both. Yeah, because it's it's a whole different setup. It takes some patience for sure, and you you know you can't yeah you have to you have to work with them differently, and that's that's not a problem. You just have to be willing and creative enough to do that. So I don't know why I've never suggested that. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, we're just brainstorming. We fuel <laughs> fuel each other. Um, I mean, I just think it'd be cool even to like somebody follow somebody around who's a caregiver and take a lot of candids. Like it's, um, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, nothing bugs me more, Jennifer, than like seeing in marketing ads these fake caregiving pictures. Like I would like to see more real caregiving pictures. And what we really look like when we're caregiving is like our <laughs> frazzled hair and all of that. But it's there's beauty in that vulnerability. Yeah, and it's real. Sure. I think people would it's relate real. to that. So yeah. I think we I think we brainstormed pretty good here. Gave people a yeah. lot of good ideas. So I hope you so you said you do the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast twice a month. So is it like first and second, first and third, or what weeks? It's do you- um, every other Wednesday of the month. So I I take a break from mid November to mid January is is a, like a season break. I figure we give one less thing for people to do during the holidays. Um, but yeah, people can find happy, healthy caregiver on the whole care network on happy, healthy caregiver.com. Um, and of course I would love, you know, I'll have the gift guide out by the, when this comes out, um, that I'm curating for the holidays for 2023. I put a lot of TLC in them because again, I like to, I think it's fun to give the right gift. Um, 
and not necessarily doesn't have to be expensive, just thoughtful. So it's going to be a bitly link um, and there'll be HHC 2023 holiday gift guide. So I hope well, we'll, people check them out. Yep. Well, they'll definitely be in the show notes because I could probably use that help too. Cause my family is really hard to buy for. We're not dealing with any dementia anymore. Not, not at the moment. <laughs> It's yeah. I mean, we get creative, like my family's big, right? So we, we gave up buying gifts for everybody long ago. And we kind of put into this rule that if you weren't physically present for somebody's birthday or the holiday, you don't even have to, you don't have to even send a card really. Like there's nothing, there was no expectation there. Um, you know, and sometimes you're with people and you can, you can, do a little something. But we if we are together, we do like a white elephant gift exchange where everybody bought like a unisex gift. And last year's was pretty funny because we had everybody from my nephew who was like 16 years old um, or maybe younger, 15. And then my brother is 60 and we have some older, older folks than that, but my brother's 60 and neurodivergent. And so I was like, okay, this will be interesting. Like and everybody in between, right? Men and women. And so uni unisex gifts. So I bought we had like a $50, I think, price range. It's like, we're only buying one gift. We're going to make it nice. Um, so there was everything in there from like, I got Quay sunglasses and my brother opened them. My brother, who's neurodivergent, loved them. Like I would have never thought to get this gift for him. He put them on, he wears them. Like we go when we go out, he's got his sunglasses and he feels, you know, like he's a sharp dressed man. And I like that. And then, but there were like crest white strips. There was, um, you know, a snow cone machine. <laughs> so we <laughs> had a Snoopy little bit. One? It wasn't Snoopy because that's got <laughs> really good memories with it, but um, they've elevated that hole. Now it doesn't melt when you put the, with the flavor on like we did so, when we were younger. So the snow cone machine or a margarita machine? <laughs> Actually, it might've been a margarita machine. It's like it could Maybe it do both. Do, yeah, do both. Or adult um, snow cones. There you go. Now we're onto something. Yeah. It's like, there's so much stuff that, um, it, you know, a good thing is like, for me is like, would I like it? If I'm going to take it out of the pile and keep it, it's probably a good gift. That's a good way to pick it. Workout clothes is usually good too, because dang, those things are expensive. They and, are expensive, you know. It's and like, you're not going to buy, or something you're not going to buy yourself. Like a splurge is is great. One of the most thoughtful gifts that I got from my daughter for, that she gave Jason and I um, one year that was a combo gift, but I know she organized it because that's how those my my son and my daughter together is my friend is a is a chef and a caterer and they hired her name's Jen they hired chef Jen to come over and cook us dinner and she just had the menu printed up and she said miss Jen's coming on January whatever she's going to cook you all a couple's dinner um and it was so nice like we sat in the dining room she cooked you know we might have chatted with her a little bit in between we had some wine but for for us what a treat that we had this like Fancy dinner. We didn't have to go out and pay for it. And it was really a thoughtful gift from the kids. That is a good idea. I did that. I had a home chef do cater, or, you know, was, they did, they came to my house and cooked for, I think it was eight or 10 of us for my 40th birthday, which was many, too many years back to not have done it since. I'll have to keep that in mind because my birthday yes. is in three days from today. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, we did one for my husband turned 50 during COVID and we did a dinner party like that at our house. And I was just telling him the other night, I'm like, that was so fun. Like what a treat for us that we didn't have to host it, but we could host it. Um, and, and give everybody kind of that experience and people can linger as long as they want, you know, there's no pressure, um, over anything like that. So yeah, back to the experiences. Those are good, good stuff. Awesome. Well, now you guys have another podcast. You can catch up on past episodes from Elizabeth over the holidays. I'm always here every week because I'm crazy. <laughs> Too many fun people to talk to like Elizabeth. So I've almost never taken a week off. I think I've taken off three in six and a half years. Wow. That's what, I mean, podcasting is, is, it's work. It's work. It so we hope that you all are enjoying the, uh, the podcast. I love creating it, but it is, it is work. So, and just, you know, thanks to those of us who sponsor our episodes too, that can, that can help, help. Um, Most definitely. Yeah. Well, I appreciate this and um, look forward to collaborating on something else in the future. 
Yeah. I look forward to hearing what the great gifts were that you got this year. (laughs) Terrific. (laughs) See you later. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.